Hey, Chris Simon here. So uh, I've got a news story today, which is a good reminder, actually, of the need to be prepared for the event of a natural disaster, which is a pretty common thing in Japan, and frankly, it's a possibility anywhere in the world. So um, yeah, a bit of news and a bit of talking about making sure that you're prepared for when the inevitable a big earthquake or some sort of natural disaster happens when you're in Japan. So the news story that I noticed this morning, it was actually in Ibaraki Prefecture, very close to Tokyo, directly east from Tokyo basically, very close to Narita actually, there was a, a beaching of 150 dolphins. Uh, it's not known why, why it happened and it's not an understood phenomenon actually, it happens a lot in New Zealand, they, they, they used to think it was a mass suicide, sometimes it can be caused by submarines or sonar, like they run away from it. Um, but it's also associated with, it definitely happened, the last time this phenomenon happened, 50 dolphins beached themselves on the same beach. Uh, back in uh, five, five, five or six days before the Great East Japan earthquake in 2011. And this is, hasn't happened since then, it's happening again now. So it does look like the same sort of signs as from the last quake. No one understands uh, how the dolphins, how this affects them so far ahead. We've only figured out how to detect waves from you know, earthquakes at 30 seconds or 60 seconds ahead of the actual quake. So it's not a very well understood phenomenon, and this could have nothing to do with this. You know, there might not be an earthquake, but certainly. This is what happened last time, and it's a good reminder to make sure that you're prepared in the event of a, an earthquake. So, uh, what I learned last time from the 2011 earthquake um, that I think is a, is a good reminder for people, just to make sure that you're prepared if, if the real thing happens again. And it really happened before, but we were very lucky that there wasn't really any major damage in Tokyo. Here's what you need to think about. You need to think, not only if you're in Tokyo, it's a given if you're in Japan you have to think about this, but you have to actually think about this everywhere that you live anyway, and it helps to be prepared for this. Um, in the event of a quake, one, do you have all the contact information for everyone that you need? Do you have it written down in a physical media, not reliant on a computer or a mobile phone or something with batteries or that needs power? Make sure it's written down and make sure you've got two ways, like a mobile phone and a landline way of connecting with someone because you don't know if these networks will keep up in the event of a quake. Um, or, or, you know, when everyone's trying to use their phones at the same time. So have multiple ways and have a list of all the people you need to contact. Domestic, overseas, embassy, um, schools, workplaces. I had to look up my wife's workplace phone number, I didn't know it. So there's that, uh, relatives and so on. Uh, have a plan and talk with your family about how you will get home, including checking maps, because a lot of people were found, they had to walk home and they didn't know how to walk home. They're so used to using trains. The problem is after the quake, they checked the train lines overnight and they stopped all the trains for 24 hours and everyone had to walk home. That was actually, it was terrible. I hope that they're going to improve it this time. But certainly uh, plan for, for finding your way home, uh, walking if necessary uh, without it. Some people actually started putting sneakers at work because they ruined their feet from walking so far. Um, bicycle stuff like that, but uh, print out and keep a hard copy of a map is a good idea. Um, keep a supply of food, a plan for there not being, uh, for there being disruption to supplies for a while. So make sure you keep enough kind of uh, canned food or long-term storage type foods, as well as keep a good supply of water at home. We, we keep a few boxes kind of as a buffer. Uh, we learned that from last time, we always keep that handy. Make sure you've got a civil defense kit, lots of batteries, torches, radio, because you need a radio. Uh, presume, plan for there not being water and for there not being electricity, because again, this is something which can happen, and it's, it's what happened last time. Um, electricity is not so bad, um, but uh, you know you can manage if you've got batteries and stuff like that. A hand charger for mobile phones is something a lot of people use nowadays, and I, I, I actually it's something I think I'm going to get myself. Um, you can have like a hand crank torch and battery and charger and stuff like that. Um, one thing that caught a lot of people off guard last time was that even when you plan for food and for water and stuff like that, if you're in areas that are on reclaimed land, uh, it turned out that the, the water and gas in those areas became disconnected because they kind of floated off there the, the, where the, the pipes were. And a lot of people, even in Tokyo, went for months without water. Now, water you can go and have showers and public baths and you can buy drinking water but you don't go very long without toilets without getting really uncomfortable and this is actually the, the case in Christchurch as well from my relatives down there um, emergency camping toilets people don't think of putting them in their kit but you know this we, we ended up donating ours to other people who needed them in that situation but certainly having um, emergency toilets like they have these kind of plastic ones you can put in a cardboard box if necessary to improvise a toilet 
uh, maybe the most important thing, the, the, the thing which most surprised me from the last quake that people tell you, you know, even in a couple of days before you start getting worried about food or water, you, to toilets are the biggest thing. So I'm not saying that there's going to be a quake or anything like that. It's just a, it's just a point, it's a good reminder. This sort of phenomenon does often accompany quakes and it's a good reminder when you see it that even if there's not going to be a quake, there's any number of reasons it might have happened. But at the same time, just make sure you've always prepared wherever you are in the world, but especially if you're in Japan, because it is a 100% certainty you're going to encounter a big earthquake in Japan if you're here for any length of time. Just make sure you're prepared for it and that you're thinking ahead and that you've got a bit of a plan that you can uh, put into action if you need to, because you'll need to do it. I mean, once every 10 years, there's a major quake somewhere in Japan, and Tokyo is overdue for one. So, uh, yeah, just be prepared. Peace.